by watching it today, but you've never run a marathon before. Can you do it in a year? Can you can you train yourself up to be able to do a marathon in a year? Absolutely. A year is is a, a long time. Actually, we have less time for the London Marathon just now because it's always historically been in April. And then because of COVID, they moved to um, October and it's back in April for 2023. So it's a short gap this time. But there's still plenty of time for those people. The ballot is open right now already as of yesterday and people can enter. Most Marathon training programs actually are about 16 weeks long, so there's plenty of time. They are aimed at people that are already doing a bit of running, but there are things like couch to 5K that you could start right now um, and then build yourself up to joining into one of those programs and then spend 16 weeks building your mileage up. And then come April, if you're lucky enough to get through the ballot or you, you um, run for a charity place, then you'll be on the start line just like the people are today, right now, come April 2023. There might not be very many runners of today's marathon who are, who are watching or listening now because you've probably got other things on their mind. Yeah. But there might be plenty of family members of people who are doing it. What do they need to know? What happens after running a marathon, especially for those people who aren't, you know, sort of regular um, sort of athletes, if you like. What do they need to do to keep their muscles sort of still going after this sort of ordeal? Yeah, so after the jubilation of crossing the finish line, whether you've hit your desired time or not, then, you know, you're, you're on this high, your endorphins are rushing, you, you find your family, and the classic thing is to go off and do a bit of celebrating, maybe sit down, have some Prosecco or a, a few few beers or ciders, and, and the athletes will want to eat. They'll want to eat and eat and eat. The key thing to say to them is, you know, get up every 20 minutes and move around. Rigor mortis sets in pretty quickly after you finish the marathon, and their endorphins will still be on this big high level, um, and they might not realize it. So as the support crew, just get them up, do some gentle stretching every 20 minutes, keep them moving, and they're going to feel a lot happier come tomorrow morning or delayed onset muscle soreness is actually worse on Tuesday morning. I, I've been talking at the Marathon Expo all week on the main stage there, giving this advice. Don't take Monday off work, um, take Tuesday off work. That's the day that they're gonna feel the, the stiffest and the sorest from the marathon, walking backwards down the stairs in the morning because their quadriceps are hurting so much. So look after those athletes that have done that great thing and manage their expectations about how they'll feel Monday and Tuesday. What can you describe for us? What is it like actually crossing that finish line, no matter what your time? It's just incredible. And, and there's a, a wonderful Martin Yelling, who's the coach, and he was joining me on stage all week. He says to people, you know, imagine your future self 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, being so proud of you crossing that finish line. Um, coming down the mall, that wonderful feeling that you're, you're just about to complete this thing you've been working for for many, many months, and the feeling is euphoric. People have spoken outside of the birth of their children. It's the greatest moment of their life. Irrespective of what time you do, that moment will be etched in your personal history forever, and you'll always look back on this with great, wonderful um, memories that just define that you were good enough to do that on that day, on that year, like nothing else you've experienced.